guys, welcome to another episode of our Duotone Foiling Tech Talk. I'm Klaas and I'm standing here with Jerome Bonnier, our foil designer. And as you can see, we're standing here with a bunch of masts. Today we want to talk about masts and the different options we have and obviously what you should choose also in terms of length. So I'm just going through them quickly. We have some aluminium masts here, obviously cheaper. Um, we have a version with a quick mount system that, that you can just attach and detach with a single screw here. We have the classic screw-on version. Um, and then we have carbon masts here, our SLS series, the classic screw-on version. And same here, we have a quick mount version available. And then we have the top of the range, our D-Lab, which is a high modulus carbon. And yeah, Jerome, I'd like to ask you about uh, what's been done here in terms of uh, design work. What's the differences between these diff different masks? Because they're not all the same in profile, I think. And uh, then we get into the different length, which length is for which rider. Yeah, sure. So let's start with the aluminum mask. This is obviously our budget-friendly option and uh, targeted at, obviously, the beginners, the schools, uh, anyone that doesn't really want to break the bank, you know, get uh, into the sport. So they're still a great option. They work really well. We obviously uh, decided to go relatively uh, thick in the, the profile and also pretty long in the cord length because we wanted them to be uh, very strong and be able to tackle any size of wings. Mm -hmm. So obviously the schools are going to be running relatively big wings, beginners in general, relatively big wings. So that's the idea. We've got something still like the, the drag is still, I would say, very good if you take into account that it's uh, almost 19 millimeters thick and 135 millimeters in core length. Uh, we still have a very decent uh, uh, drag on these uh, drag values on these uh, these masks. And uh, yeah, it's it can tackle anything in our range. Mm -hmm. um, then we move on to the our SLS series which is already a little bit more a, a premium product, obviously in carbon fiber and available in uh, with or without the quick mount. In case you go for, for the quick mount, we've decided to go with a mid profile. We call it the mid profile, meaning that it's in between our thinnest option, which is the D-Lab, and our thicker option, which is the normal SLS without the quick mount. So and the SLS and the alloy have the same profile, right? Yeah. So these two profiles are the same, uh, whether you pick the, the carbon or the aluminum, your, your, your drag is going to be the same, basically. Um, in case of the quick mount carbon, we are in between in terms of thickness. So we are a little bit more flexy than the standard SLS, but we're still a bit stronger than the than the thinner D-Lab. Uh, what would you say is the, like the sweet spot in wing size for, for that mid-profile? Mid that mid-profile, you probably can go up to, let's say, a meter 20 in span. Uh, it'll still hold it uh, well. More than that, you probably want to stick with the, the standard SLS without the quick mount, which is a little bit thicker, yeah. or the, the aluminum. But it, the mid works all the way up to the biggest pump wings. It's just not yeah. quite as rigid anymore, right? You can go for it. You're not going to break the mast or anything, but it could be that you, you find a little bit better uh, performance out of, the, out of the thicker one. Especially when you're heavy. Especially if you're heavy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but for 80% you know, of our range, this one will work, no problem. Mm -hmm. Then we move to our thinnest and lightest mast, the D-Lab. Um, so main difference is profile thickness and cord length. We go from uh, almost 19 millimeters to just under 17 millimeters on this one. And cord length, we are at 125 millimeters against 135 and 130 in the case of the, the mid. Um, that's going to be targeted at the most advanced riders. Uh, all our team riders, obviously, who are freestyling or riding in waves are loving this, this 82D lab. Um, that's also my personal favorite, pretty sure yours as well. <laughs> um, but of course, it's a, a more expensive option. We are using uh, high modulus carbon fiber to uh, still have a 
relatively uh, strong mass, even though it's the thinnest out of our range. And uh, recently I saw some, some testing that an independent uh, brand had done comparing different masks and we were uh, tied, I think, with the, the stiffest mass on the market with, with our um, thinner option. So that says a lot about the range in general, like our thickest masks are potentially, uh, yeah, one of the... Most rigid, yeah. Most rigid and mass. rigidity is obviously key for a lot of the control and... Rigidity is key, and we've been saying that from day one. Uh, uh, two, three years ago, we had uh, masks which were a little bit bulky and heavy, and uh, uh, we were getting a little bit of bad publicity for that. And then suddenly now we see all the brands are actually slowly moving towards what we've always believed into, which was rigidity first, and then comes the rest. You know, So we do think that we are on the right track, and it's certainly something that we want to keep also a future development, it's always first get that mass rigidity down and then we look at, at the rest, yeah. Okay, so rigidity, obviously, the mass itself is one key element, yep. but then also the connections to um, the different pieces, like this, for example, is not only screwed on, it's glued and screwed yep. um, in the alloy mass, so it basically feels like one piece, um, yep. super rigid. Um, then we have... Uh, the top connections to the to the fuselages, like yeah. the work that's been done there. I know we've tweaked around on the carbon stuff for years. Yeah. Um, what can you say about that? So we've got two connection uh, methods. On the aluminum mast, we have uh, kind of a, a pocket in our fuselage where the mast fits directly inside. Uh, it's kind of like a tight fit, and we've got two M8 balls keeping everything together. Mm -hmm. And on all our carbon masks, we have a connection which we call the 3BS, so the three bolt system. Um, we, uh, we've, we've chosen to go for three M8 bolts. Initially, we tried with M6s, worked, but we were not 100% uh, happy. We still had a few cases of on very big landing, some breakage, et cetera, et cetera. So we decided to take the time, change everything, kind of last minute, delay a little bit our production. And in the end, we moved to the M8s, three of them, and we're super happy with that because we've had zero issues with those and we intend to, to keep this connection in the future. Um, the actual way the connection works is kind of a flat on flat um, connection onto the fuselage. This was first uh, introduced on the kite fall mast uh, a couple of years ago already. And uh, it allows us to have a very good transition between the bottom of the mass into the fuselage. So very low drag. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you're always sure to have zero movement as well because it's just two flat surfaces and then being pressed down by three M8 screws. So again, if you start comparing our foils with others on the market and playing on the beach with them, you will realize that we've got a super solid uh, transition between the mast and the fuselage, which is very important. Cool. So yeah, obviously rigidity in the entire system is uh, key to have a system uh, yeah, to base uh, to base your falls on. Now talking a little bit about the different length options. Um, we have a 75 here, we have an 82 here, we have a 90 here. Um, they're all available in these different lengths, plus a 60, which we don't have here. 60, basically for shallow waters. Yep. Most users that have the water depth want to have something longer. So 75, like, who would you re recommend a 75 to? So beginners, uh, guys that are into downwinding, um, and um, prone. prone surfing as well. Yeah, we are often on sort shallow of shallow, shallow reef. So 75 is definitely interesting for prone surfing as well. And uh, if in general you're riding on pretty flat water conditions and you don't really need that length to clear a big chop or anything, 75 is completely fine. Kids as well. Kids. My, own, my own junior rides a 75, yeah. All right, and then stepping up to the 82. So the 82 is kind of the jack of all trade, uh, kind of fits everywhere. Um, freestyle, you can go into waves with it. Uh, it's definitely our best seller, the 82. Like most riders kind of pick that one mast and do it all with it. And then finally the 90, uh, obviously if you've got big chop to clear or big waves, um, 
yeah, some, peop some people like downwinding also with the 90 for some conditions that allows them to sort of cross through, through waves a bit better. It's kind of more down to personal preference in that case. But uh, yeah, racing, big waves, um, definitely a less, let's say, less popular option if you look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. I would say 82 is the way more popular option than the 75 and finally the 90 in terms of sales, num sales numbers, yeah. Okay. Thanks for these infos. Um, I hope you guys like that content and get some help on which mask to choose for yourself. Um, I personally really like the new uh, SLS quick mount. It's a great, like quick, easy to mount option uh, with a great um, drag ratio and stiffness. So it's especially for those mid-size wings, it's a really, yeah. uh, would be my go-to choice. Um, if you need more help, we will have our foil configurator online and uh, you should play with that and check it out. There's a water conditions tab that you can play with and that really um, gives you the, the right mast length. So yeah, subscribe, like if you want to um, see more of that content and see you in the next one.